Hello and welcome to the Engineering channel. In today's video, I'm going to present a bit more information about the Hall Effect sensor. To be more specific, I will demonstrate the sensor that I bought. I bought a plenty of them. This is in mini box here. And the specific model that I bought was the 49E. This particular model exhibits a distinct characteristic when we analyze the signal generated at the output. Essentially, we can classify the Hall effect sensors in two different models when we examining the output. Let's consider that the most common Hall effect sensor that we can find have the output capable of generating digital signals. And this representation is with ones and zero, indicating the presence or absence of voltage in the output. On the other hand, we have the linear Hall effect sensor. This type of sensor can generate an analog signal at the output. So there are many values that can appear in the output within a specific range of voltage. In this video, we will test this sensor analyzing the behavior regarding the presence of a magnetic field. The first step before testing is to check the sensor code. That is marked in the front or in the top of the sensor. And with the information of the code, we can confirm which type of Hall effect sensor we are working with. In this case, as mentioned before, we are using the model 49E. This model can generate an analog output, classifying it as a linear Hall effect sensor. Another important aspect is the encapsulation of the Hall effect sensors. As you can see, there are at least three different models, one of which is the TO92X that we are going to use for this test. And there are also other models designed for mounting on the surface of a PCB, such as SOT23 and SOT89. Moving forward, let's analyze this graph that represents the behavior of the sensor outputs in relation to the magnetic flux. As you can observe, in the red section of the graph, it indicates a negative magnetic flux. This is generated by the north pole of the magnet. We can note that when there is a peak in the how sensor detection, we observe the minimum voltage in the output. In the absence of a magnetic field represented in the middle of the graph, we observe half of the voltage used to supply the sensor. Moving to the right part of the graph, we can see the behavior when there is a positive magnetic flux. This flux is generated by a salt pole magnetic field. As the magnetic flux increases, there is a corresponded increase in the output until it reaches the limit near of the supply voltage that the sensor is using. Now let's move on to the practical approach. I already have the Hall effect sensor mounted on the breadboard. The necessary connections are very simple. As you can see, pin 1 on the left is the positive, pin 2 in the middle is the negative, and the pin 3 on the right is the output of the Hall effect sensor. Another component that I'm using here on the left side of the breadboard is a DC-DC converter, which is employed to provide a 5 volts DC supply to the Hall effect sensor. The pins of the DC-DC converter are directly connected to the two bars. The top bar, colored in blue, serves as the negative connection, and the bottom bar, colored in red, provides the positive supply for the Hall effect sensor. Let's review the Hall effect sensor pins once more. On the left, we have the pin number one, labeled as VDC, 
where the orange wire is connected for the positive supply of the sensor. Moving to the middle pin, the pin, the number two, we have connected the green wire for the negative supply. Finally, on the right, we find the pin number three serving as the output of the sensor. This is where we can obtain measurements from the sensor output. Now let's proceed with the multimeter connections to analyze the behavior of the high effect sensor outputs. Connect the black jack to the negative terminal and the red jack to the output of the Hall FX sensor. So let's turn on the multimeter and set it to the volts DC scale. Now the only pending step to start the test is to connect the supply of the DC DC converter and energize all the circuit. Once connected, we can observe that the output of the high effect sensor reads approximately 2.5 DC volts. This is normal since there is currently no magnetic flux affecting the Hall effect sensor. When we examine the graph, we can confirm that the output value is correct as it corresponds to half of the power supply voltage. It means that with a supply of 5 DC volts, we observe 2.5 DC volts in the output. Now let's begin the test with a magnet. This magnet has the salt magnetic pole on the concave surface and the north magnetic pole on the flat surface. Using this tool, we will approach the salt pole of the magnet in front of how effect sensor. It means that we are going to generate positive magnetic flux in front of the how effect sensor and observe how the sensor's output behaves. As we approach slowly, we can observe that output starting to increment until it reaches saturation that occurs near from the VCC with around 4.1 or 4.2 volts DC. As we begin to remove the magnet, we observe a gradual decrease in voltage. When the sensor is no longer influenced by the magnetic flux, the voltage returns to the baseline of 2.5 volts DC, what is the initial condition without any magnetic fields. The next test involves inverting the magnetic pole of the magnet. We will now approach the Hall effect sensor with the flat surface of the magnet, representing a magnetic north pole. Let's see what happens. As we approach slowly, we observe that voltage starting to decrease below 2.5 volts, continuing to decline until it reaches the minimum saturation point, which is around 0.8 or 0.75 DC volts. Finally, when we remove the magnet from the front of the sensor, the voltage starts to increase until it reaches the initial condition of 2.5 volts DC. In summary, the operation of this linear Hall effect sensor is very straightforward. I hope you found this video helpful. If you enjoyed the content, please consider subscribe to the channel. Give it a thumbs up if you like this video and stay tuned for more. See you soon.